Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Morning Dew Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on July 12th, 2021. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to the Daily Dew, where we give an update on world weather, earthquakes, volcanoes, and of course, space weather. Looking at the sun in the last 48 hours, that filament did drop back into the sun. And as well, we do have a couple sun events to talk about here. You're going to be able to see them on LASCO 2. This is 304 angstroms. Incoming images right now. Active sunspot regions. Small M-class solar flare coming from the spot on the right there. We'll have a closer look at that in just a moment. Outgoing images here. And that is where we had a couple CMEs shoot away. But we did have something shoot away from the backside of the sun as well. And that will be visible on the Iswa coming right up. Just having a closer look at the M-class solar flare right there. That bright flash was the solar flare. And it is most likely will be on our way, on its way to Earth because it was in an Earth-facing position. Looking at a multi-spectrum light, you can see all the events happening on the sun especially the top right there. It has been very active through that region the last couple weeks. Looking at another light here. This is 171 angstroms. We do have that Earth-facing coronal hole, and we're expecting geomagnetic activity. We're kind of seeing the effects now. Looking here at the LASCO 2 and LASCO 3, images of the three sun events that went on today. The last 48 hours on our sun has been pretty active, to say the least. Sizable CME to the right there. And also the M-class solar flare. You can see that bright flash northwestern side of our sun. Looking here at Iswa, you can see a double shot, huge flare event coming from the backside of the sun. And they're not even, they haven't even put in the sun event from today. So that was a pretty massive event, the backside of the sun. And luckily that was not earth facing, man, oh man, that was huge. directed right at Parker Solar Probe though. Looking here at our geomagnetic activity, it is slightly elevated, seeing some effects right now. As well, proton flux is increasing. Temperature is rising as well. Pretty unstable geomagnetic activity right now. To say the least, 346 kilometers per second solar winds. Looking at the Schumann resonance for today, it's a power of 10, quality of 9. Stay safe out there, everybody. Much love and thank you for tuning in today. Having a quick look at earthquakes for the last 24 hours. Just recently, we did have a 5.2 here in Rosin, Rosiero, Nicaragua. So that's right off the coast of Nicaragua. And as well, Guatemala seeing a 4.1 as well another 4.1 just north of there 3.8 to report in cuba and the action seems to be back here in puerto rico san antonio puerto rico seeing a 3.1 today across the united states it's been pretty active as well manchester oklahoma with a 3.0 2.6 there in midland texas and then right along the border here new mexico 4.2 in Capulan, New Mexico, and as well, 3.7, 3.0 to follow. And just after somebody came in and asked about Yellowstone in the live stream, sure enough, Yellowstone wakes up. A couple earthquakes there to report in Yellowstone. As well, the swarm continues through Smith Valley, California, Mer Merkleyville, and as well, a 3.4 there to report Petrolia, California, largest on the coastline for the last 24 hours have you give you a quick look here around yellowstone these are the minor earthquakes that were ringing off today they weren't very large but it's in the same region the last seven days and the movement seems to be 
pushing westwards, northwestwards towards the Purple Mountain Range. You can see this here on Google Earth, that region right there, and then up into Stanley, Idaho. And there's lots of pressure through Pacific Northwest right now and California. As of late, we have been observing all of the earthquakes and as well the fires and extreme heat and as well explosions being reported through Washington. Still, these are not just quarry blasts. These are explosions being reported. This is the last seven days around the area, Morton, Washington, and as well Tokeland, Washington, one up there in Princeton, Canada. Fires are breaking out around the Wanachi Reserve. Thoughts and prayers going out to everybody around the world here. Quick look there, Hawaii, largest to report, 3.1. Alaska has quieted down a bit. Chiniak, Alaska, most recent. As well, Russia here seeing some earthquakes, 4.7 at Kamchatsky. 4.5 there, Kuril Islands, as well, 4.7, Japan, Izu, Japan, 4.4 there to report, Zangiv, China, and as well, Tobilo, Indonesia, 4.6, 76 kilometer depth, still seeing some earthquakes after that large 6.1, Banda Sea reporting 145 kilometer depth, 4.5, and that's pretty much the deepest earthquake the last 24 hours. We aren't seeing our regular deep earthquakes in Fiji. Also reporting here, Somalia Plate, 4.1. And as well, last night, a 4.4 there in Morocco at a 10-kilometer depth in North Africa. Quiet, considering here through South America, 4.2. These are both, these are all reported yesterday. So nothing to report South America today, except for the 5.2, Guatemala, that is Central America. Having a look here, the last seven days for earthquakes, lots of activity through North America as has been documented through daily events worldwide all week long. Please come and check out the live stream at any time to check out earthquakes for your region. Very active through the Philippines plate. Minor activity through Europe and way too quiet through Central America, South America. Let's have a quick look here at the Pacific Disaster Center, showing the most recent volcanoes getting updated amongst all of the floods and fires that are riddled all over this app right now. Looking at Karamiski in Russia, Suez and Ajima in Japan, Fuego in Guatemala, many fires, many fires, BC. We're going to get to that in just a moment. Sabin Kaya in Peru, Ebuco in Russia, Nevados de Chile in Colombia, Reventador in Ecuador, Decono in Indonesia, Sangue in Ecuador, Popo in Mexico, and as well, Nevados de Ruiz in Colombia. So yeah, as I said, many fires and extreme heat conditions are still continuing across Western Canada and as well, Western United States has the new fires to report here. Mount Porter Fire in British Columbia, and as well Purdy Lake, British Columbia. We've got the Becker Lake Fire two hours ago reported, and as well Embleton Mountain Fire, Flat Lake Fire, British Columbia. So apparently there are over 250 fires across British Columbia right now. Uh, we, Pretty dire situation. Thoughts and prayers going out to everybody that is affected. But it continues on through the Pacific Northwest, through the United States. Extreme heat conditions continue. Fires through Montana. It seems fires all around the pressure mounting across the Pacific Northwest. Fires through Wenatchee. And then we've got tornado conditions here in Bingham, Binghamton, New York. Extreme weather moving through there today. They've also had flash flooded, flooding conditions through Boston, Philadelphia, New York City. 
from Tropical Storm Elsa. Let's have a look at the five-day forecast brought to you by Media Earth and as well daily events worldwide starting out here, home base, Calgary, Alberta, as we do still have some summer, great summer-like conditions throughout the week. And we may have some instability in the air later in the week, but not too much has been creating this week for extreme weather. But we do have a pretty intense low-pressure system that's finally going to leave the BC coastline headed across the BC mountains, definitely going to bring some relief for central British Columbia, but also going to bring some extreme weather into Alberta, parts of southern Alberta, as that low moves in. Long-range forecast, but not much to talk about this week. Most of the moisture and the weather is moving eastward. Long line of moisture creeping right up into Newfoundland. Extreme heat conditions continue through the west, and as well, very moisturous through Mexico, tropical moisture just being flooded through the equator there right now. No tropical storms to talk about in the future, nor areas of interest for the moment. Pretty strong, warm, dominant, high-pressure ridge over the Atlantic right now. Overlooking Europe get a low pressure system just south of the United Kingdom right now is going to be creeping its way eastward throughout the week going to bring some extreme weather to some areas as equatorial warm air is being pumped up from below and we've got some moisturous low pressure systems northeastern parts of Europe as well A lot of rain moving into Russia, Western Russia. No major weather developments here over Africa, except for some very cold conditions moving into parts of South Africa. Check this out in the long range forecast. It could be minus eight in some regions. In parts of Southeast Africa this week, some very abnormal temperatures. I'm sure people will be complaining a bit about that through parts of South Africa. So heads up, my African friends. Overlooking Southeast Asia and as well the West Indies, low pressure system finally is going to leave India and then head into the Sea of Yemen and over Iran. Low pressure system seems locked and loaded over the Tibetan plateau right now. Just continual lines of moisture daily through the Malaysian mountains. And as well, daily evaporation rains through Papua New Guinea and the Philippines this week. Low pressure system coming into the Philippines Wednesday into Thursday. And then it's going to be scooting eastward. No typhoons to talk about in the long range and no areas of interest for the Pacific Ocean right now, except for that system that's going to rip through the Philippines that could develop into something stronger. Overlooking Australia, that large low pressure system that was warned two days ago for parts of Western Australia is going to bring some snow to parts of Southeastern Australia. So long a line and waves of moisture from this huge low pressure system south of you and then watch as all this rain continues throughout the week for southeastern parts of Australia. And then watch for snow as well in the higher elevations. Overlooking New Zealand, you've got a wet week ahead of you as well. Moisture moving in pretty much Wednesday right until the weekend. Overlooking Pacific Ocean and Hawaii, pretty much dry, dominant high pressure ridge right over top. And this is the only area of interest that I'll be watching over the next five days for sure. And this is a low pressure system in the East Pacific heading westward. Overlooking South America, very dry week ahead of you guys. And that is not good. You may have a very disastrous fire situation coming up as well. Cooler in parts of South America, Argentina this week. 
I want to thank everybody for watching. I'm going to leave you here looking at the northern hemisphere versus the southern, pointing out the low-pressure systems spinning around our planet right now. Again, thank you for watching. I want to thank all of the memberships and as well all of the donations. God bless you all. Thank you so much for your support and your contributions to the channel's research and productions. Stay safe out there, aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun. And get your morning due. Bye-bye now. video please hit that like button subscribe share with your friends and family from across the world